Hey, welcome to our weekly webinar. I'm Angelo Darren, driverpreneur with Ride Local, and today we're going to talk about a lot of things that have been transpired in the weekly news. Uh, there's been some things going on. Uber's doing testing as far as testing to put dogs into vehicles uh, to see if they can want to do that. I know they've gotten a lot of complaints with um, like riders complaining and saying, hey, you know, a lot of riders have animals, so they want to put the animals in their vehicles in order to transport them. So Uber's doing a testing right now. But I just want to get over to the opening as far as, uh, you know, if you want to subscribe down below, you can do that. You hit the notification bell. That way, every time we do a video, you'll be alerted of the fact that uh, our video just came out. Uh, so, anyway, I want to first cap in what's happening in the news with Ride Local. A lot of things happening. Uh, on our platform, we decided to build everything that either people weren't building or didn't have or riders wanted and other rideshare companies didn't have. So what we've done is kind of open up the playing field and said, okay, we're a company that's going to service the public. We're going to service them the best way we know how through taking from point A to point B. Uh, we also know that uh, the, the fare amount is important to riders. So riders generally do not uh, make any decision based on their transportation uh, other than uh, the fare amount. Now, some people are locked into a certain company and, and I won't name new names, but they'll be, they're devoted because they're just used to doing it and they don't want to change. So some people are locked into that. So money comes to another factor which pushes people to make changes and to do things because that's really what it's about. Riders want to go inexpensive from point A to B to get there and drivers don't really what it's about. So what we have developed is a system that uh, will show you exactly what we have opened up. Uh, we do rides for kids. Uh, a lot of times we'll have uh, some of our riders' parents uh, will uh, go ahead and schedule for a sporting event and that way they don't have to and they can meet the child later when they're actually uh, in the game. But you know, a lot of times the kids go to uh, events earlier uh, than the parent really has to as far as showing and watching the game. And so a lot of times we'll drive them there and sometimes we'll pick them up as well depending on like a lot of practices and stuff. So that's one of the things we've opened up. We've also done dogs. So if you have a dog, uh, don't worry. Uh, but it's also a discretion of the driver determine how they want the dog to come into their vehicle some drivers that we have uh, just wanted them they can come in but they have to be caged or on a leash uh, and now their drivers really don't care so it's, it's a preference of the driver and that's why it's unique about the ride local platform because as you build the platform you, you really build your customer base. When you build your customer base, you not only uh, gather trust, right? But also a, a type of a friendship where not only, they're not only helping you support yourself, you know, and helping you support your business, but the rider also uh, is being supported by lower fares. And you knowing more about that rider, you can provide a better service to them. And we can get a lot of that later, but another one is seniors. Uh, we're having a lot of issues with seniors not having the ability to take transportation, like say from their living center, unless there's shuttles and stuff. A lot of them, there are some people, seniors out there have trouble with transportation, just getting into the grocery store and getting a, food, a few food items, or they have a trouble uh, by just going to the doctor. So we do provide those that transportation for seniors. We do have a platform where we provide uh, uh, pre all these are pre-scheduled uh, appointments for the rides. Another one is our airport rides. We do have uh, people who will pre-schedule an airport ride. They'll know where the flight comes in. It's the time. Uh, we keep in close ties with the airport as far as flight schedules go. And that way, we'll, you know, our drivers will work in conjunction with you to make sure that you're on time and also, let's say there's a delay in a flight that maybe you won't get picked up until at a later time. So we, we correspond with you and we have uh, the driver has uh, some correspondence with the rider to dictate exactly when is the best time to be picked up. And that way that rider can get there to the airport, get on time and uh, not be stressed out and have a lot of anxiety. Our other one is our ride to work program where people have uh, problems getting back and forth to work. And it could be on a limited basis where it's once in a while, my car breaks down, I need to get to work type of basis. Or it could be on a more of a full-time basis where we have riders that use us on the ride to work program you know two times three times four and five times we even have people that we use us six times because they were they're working on a six-day schedule 
So that's the things, some of the things that we've had. We've also built in our platform and on our app, we have a radius system on there. And the radius really is up to the driver on how far he wants to reach or she wants to reach. So in other words, if you're on the northeast side of Grand Rapids, it'd probably be a good idea to get your drives at least in that area. So I would probably have my radius at a smaller radius so I don't have to drive real far to pick up my first ride. And that's really a benefit to keep your costs down, but also maximize profitability. Another thing is we have is we have a 24-7 support line, which uh, enables not only the rider or the driver, but to talk to somebody human to try to get resolution of problems. Uh, and it could be as simple as maybe leaving something in the car and need to retrieve it in a quick manner. Or it could be as simple as uh, maybe uh, the driver has a problem with the directions or whatever. The app goes down, it doesn't go back up or whatever the issue, we can talk you through it as a company. So that's why the 24 seven support line is good. Resolution is important to us. So our company is built on giving the rider and the driver resolution to any issue that you have. Nothing's perfect, things do happen. The difference is that we're transparent. And so we're transparent on pricing and everything. So we have a fare which is based on the mileage and minutes. And then on that, that's determined by the collective group of the drivers. Right now we're at 85 cents a minute or a mile and then uh, 25 cents a minute. And then the, the company, Ride Local, the rider pays a booking fee of $2, which goes, from, uh, actually it's a separate transaction from the rider to Ride Local. Uh, the fares go from, uh, literally go from the driver or the rider right to the driver. So those go right into your account. And uh, how they go in it, as far as when you want them to go in, our normal processing is every week. Obviously we have methods if you need to get it every day as you work. Some people work on a tighter budget and so they need to do it every day. One thing nice is once you start experiencing the higher fares, the higher amounts that we, we end up paying uh, drivers, uh, you'll really experience a, a difference in how much you have to work. You can spend more time caring more about your riders and spending more time and providing a better service. And that way, you know, you can increase maybe the fair amount with the tips uh, per driver rather than trying to go after doing X amount of rides. So it's all about being profitable, making sales, but minimizing my overhead or the cost it takes for me to obtain that sale. And we'll get into that as well. <laughs> Right now, in, uh, right now, we have a markets open in Yuma, uh, Arizona, and we're doing a lot of the airport trips right now because a lot of the snowbirds, they call it, that come in, uh, come in from, from the winter. They, they'll come in and go to Yuma, Arizona because uh, it's nice in the morning. It's a little bit cool, but it's a lot nicer temperature, and it's really a perfect vacation spot in their winters. And so a lot of times they'll need to have the transportation from Yuma to uh, Skyline, which is the airport in Phoenix, and uh, uh, Uber and Lyft, they don't really take animals or kids without company by an adult. One thing nice we built is we built our platform with security built into it, so it would enable us to do that, like for a senior or anything. When we tie a senior, let's say, I'll give an example, when we tie a senior with a driver, we try or having some type of related experience which relates into the care of an older person. Uh, it's almost like a child. We would not uh, tie somebody up with a, a driver with a rider child uh, unless their background exhibits child care type of, of uh, behavior. And that's really what we're looking for that to tie into the, the riders that we're doing. That way we provide a better service, but also the driver can build a platform based on what they prefer. So as a driver starts driving, when you first like sign up, uh, when you start driving, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to be sporadic. You're going to drive seniors. You might drive a kid. You might drive uh, uh, the millennials, you know, out uh, for nighttime or people to go to work. But you'll have you also have a mix of a little bit of, of everything as you build it and solidify your business. What we're going to do is knock it down more in a segmented market where you'll find areas that you prefer to work in, where you relate better to the individual that you're riding or driving. In that way, you, you just prefer that that writer uh, personality clash, what your interests are, or more click or click with the writer, and it just becomes a better uh, relationship between uh, a customer and the company.
And that, uh, that's exactly what. Now, our, uh, right now, we also are in Grand Rapids, Michigan, because this is our home base. This is our corporate uh, base. This is where we started. And so if we went from this market to Yuma, and uh, reason because more for the need and the service that rather than just be like Uber and Lyft, even though we do have our platform open for that, like a now vehicle, we do do a lot of that. A lot of our business is based on that, but, but we open up a little bit more by providing a better service because we don't want just now vehicles. We want specific things. It's like in Grand Rapids, we do a lot of airport trips at certain times of the day. And the reason being is because people flying in and out from the Gerald R. Ford Airport, which makes us sustainable trips and the profitability is good, especially on the ride local platform where the driver can make max amount of money, but they can also concentrate in that area. So they start establishing relationships with people within the airport in order to build their business or their base. So anyway, I won't, I won't get too much into that, but the next thing is I want to talk about is what our future markets are. Now, how do we determine future markets? Because we're over, really all over the place. We're in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and then our next market is Yuma, Arizona. So how do uh, we as a company determine? A lot of it's determined by interest. Uh, we get a lot of people that uh, email us and call into our company. Obviously, we list our phone number so everybody does it. I'll give it to you again in case you want to be one of those that need to call in. It's 616-204-0496. So what we do is we're transparent with our number. So we get a lot of people that call in from all over the country and in different pockets, we get more than others. Does that make sense? And as time goes on by our videos and maybe our exposure on social media, then people start getting word of mouth. People start getting more aware of us and where we get a lot more like in, a, I'll just give an example in the Florida area, we've had just shy under 50 people that have inquired about driving for us in that state. We haven't opened in that area yet but we do have pockets one thing we do we have the pockets from yuma arizona because the need is there and it was easy for us to open up because there was such a huge need so we open up in that area our next move would probably to move to the phoenix area since we're in that area anyhow so there are some markets like a cities are adjoining that we might already be moving into it but not physically open yet so we haven't done any type of advertising or any marketing in that area, that, to that sister city yet. Uh, we try to uh, open up the platform by the need of the drivers and the riders. Uh, and so what we're thinking about in the future right now is like in March, we have an opening plan for Detroit. And the only reason we're doing that, now it's on the other spectrum of the, of the state. It's from, you know, we're on the West Coast. Now we're going all the way on the east side of the state and going to Detroit. And mainly because uh, I look at it more like a battlefield. So it's almost like we hit Grand Rapids, which is on the west side. We hit Detroit on the east coast side. And we have had a lot of interest in other areas like Kalamazoo. We got a lot of high interest in Kalamazoo. We've had Battle Creek interest. The Lakeshore is high. We kind of group that into the Grand Rapids right now. And eventually we will open up that market full force. But we thought to have a plan of attack by having one on each side of the state. And then obviously we're going to fill those gaps. So that's exactly based on uh, people's uh, the needs, but based on also on uh, the type of response we get as we're opening those markets. So in March, we're going to Detroit area. The actual area that we are actually going to be working out of is Southfield area. And uh, we're going to actually uh, almost like just kind of spread out and try to build it from Southfield on out through Detroit area, even down to the southern part. Uh, southern part of, of uh, Detroit area and uh, and possibly maybe that would the reach that we get because we're talking about like the University of Michigan and Ann Arbor that's very possible our next market would be Ann Arbor but we'll see how that goes based on uh, interest so the more interest we get the more drivers signing up and giving us the interest because really there's no sign up fee so you literally you could literally uh, well, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can drive, you can download the Rider app, which is, you know, you can go to our, our webpage, which is www.ridelocalgr.com. And you can go on there and go ahead and do the Rider app. Now, why would you do the Rider app? Because it has a section on there that you can add promote promos, which you can get benefit of uh, referrals. 
So for riders, we pay $5 referral fees. Now for the drivers, we pay $200 uh, for referring a driver. So we get a driver that's been with us for 90 days. At the 90 day mark, we pay the $200 for the invite. So if you refer a driver, you get $200. For every rider, you get $5. Now that has worked really good because the only costs are associated with there's no fees whatsoever. So the only costs associated is we don't absorb uh, the background check. We ask for the drivers coming in is to at least to absorb the cost of that. And that way we we know they have some, some value or benefit in it. So they, if they have something in it, like 39.95, it's not a lot of money, but 39.95 might be the difference between someone that's committed and somebody that's not. So, that's why we do charge for the background check. We could flip it up if we knew a driver would come in and drive consistently and, and, and just make money and service to the area and help build ride local. But for, with that being said, we want people to be committed. And how can people be committed if you have some interest into it? So that monetary gain is only $40, but that's enough to make somebody spend the time to build it, to recoup their investment but not over the top where you couldn't do it even without trying. So really that's what it is. So we're trying to have a slow growth because with a slow growth, we can make sure all our drivers are busy, right? Making the max amount of money. Because our whole hopes is that you drive Tuesday for ride local, but because we're driverpreneurs, we understand that we have to make full time. So if I'm out in the, on the road and I'm not, uh, I don't have a rider in the back or I'm not picking up a rider, I'm losing money. So the whole big deal about being a driverpreneur is to make sure I'm making dollars every hour and I'm maximizing those dollars and maybe even adding more dollars through other revenue uh, through my platform. So that's really what we all should be doing. So. Uh, when you get to the point when you're full time on Ryan Local, that's because you built your base, you built your customer base, you've got relationship with your customers, just like any business would have. All right. And you've worked a minimal amount of hours to obtain the type of money that you're, you're achieving. So we set goals with you because we really, everybody's got their why. Everybody has their reasons for doing things. Some people like it. I just want a little extra money for Christmas or I want a little extra money because we want to go on vacation or whatever it be. It's a good platform to develop a set, steady uh, stream of income as well as pockets income for doing what you need to do in order to maybe pay off a car or whatever, or send your kids to private school, whatever that why is. But you can also go on the other spectrum of it where we can show you how to build that platform as a business and then add more streams on it. So really you can quit your job, your day job, or you can do it full time and, and uh, receive a full time income. Uh, but our whole hopes is to make sure that you can have sustainable income over a long haul, right? With minimal amount of time that you have to spend into it. So somewhat passive, but somewhat uh, also dollars for hours, but maximize dollars on those hours that you work. Uh, so that's really what we're doing. And uh, it's, it's actually what we want to try to do is build bridges uh, between the driver and the rider. And that way we can build the community by doing that because it just makes sense that all the money that uh, is generated by it is not only to help the driver you know create income support their family and have, but it also enables you to keep that money here where they spend their money here as well so everything's within our community and that is so important in order to support the businesses within the community if you don't support them they're going to go away now in the 70s, your local community businesses was a lot more present than they are today. Although we're on an upswing, so we're kind of like repeating history. And right now we're starting to do it back down where local businesses are important. It's talked about more and more people are living more downtown. So local is a big deal. But if you don't support local and you don't take that little shop that maybe sells just shirts, t-shirts or whatever, you don't take that shop and help support them, they're not gonna be able to sustain their business. They're gonna be out of business. Eventually that will start going away unless we support it. So I think it's very important. Now, the reason why I say that because in the seventies it went away. 
it wasn't supported as much as it should have been. They started going out to the, the malls and all that, and they weren't supporting the local businesses. When they did that, that changed it, right? Then it went away, and now we're trying to bring it back. So if we're bringing it back, it's because we think it's important. So if we think it's important, I think we should make a decision to consciously support local businesses so we can keep them here, but also build them to be bigger than just uh, this type of businesses they started out to be. Because really, us being residents in a community, it's our duty in this community to support it and add to it because we live in it. We take out of it. So in order, anytime you take something, you should also put something back. So I encourage everybody in Grand Rapids to do that. And I know a lot of people talk about it, buy local and there is cliche, but it is so important in order to sustain it and keep it here. Because I really think that's what we want. Otherwise we wouldn't keep on bringing it back after generations and generations. Uh, so if we, it's what we want, let's give it to us, but let's also give it to the people that come after us, like our children and our grandkids. Really, that's what is more important is about other people. So let's go ahead and buy local when we can and make a conscious effort to support the people in our community in order to build it and then expand it. But get back into the Detroit area. So well, if we fill in the gap, our hopes is to get into the Kalamazoo, Lansing, and so on, because Lansing is our capital, and it'd be a nice to have our rideshare presence there. So anyhow, that's where our future goals are. Uh, can they change? Of course they can. But right now, we are do have uh, Detroit slated to open in March. So I'm going to encourage everybody who's listening right now. We have uh, people in the queue ready to drive. They haven't been approved completely yet, but I encourage everybody if you are in Detroit, if you know anybody in Detroit and they'd like to make an extra income or they might make a nice income to get them out of their jobs, then uh, tell them to get on www.ridelocalgr.com and just look up under the Become a Driver page and it gives you all the information you need to know, the cost, the setup. And if you're really interested, you can go ahead and fill out the form on the bottom or they can. And then at that point, you'll give them the next step in the process. You now, uh, we encourage everybody to do it since March. I mean, right now it's what, February. So we, we're not too far off going into March where we start opening Detroit. So as many drivers we can possibly get, as many riders we can get just to let them know about it uh is going to increase it as well so spread the word do what you can out on the, on the platform you know on your if you're on your feed and your facebook or your twitter do what you can to spread the word because this is important and if you have any questions uh you can also ask us questions by, by going to support at ridelocalgr.com and that's our email address so go ahead and uh, shoot us an email with any questions or suggestions anything that you have or you can call us on our number at 616-204-0496. We're excited about what's happening. I mean, Grand Rapids, a lot of things have happened. We have grown. We, uh, it's amazing because our obviously we're limited on drivers. We always will be. That's really the way to do it. And that way every driver is busy and they're making the type of money they need to make. So we're always limited. But being the limited, we have people that we call our mercy on call drivers. I being one of them, my partner being another, and we have a few other ones. And that's when uh, the platform gets so busy uh, that the regular drivers we have on the road can't handle the riders or the requests coming in. And so we get alerted and obviously then we start taking calls. Well, it started out, where, you know, like in, in the following week, then it started being a lot more alerts. And just to see the business grow and people starting to understand that lower fares with Ride Local, that's what we're all about. Uh, and that's really what it's all about is, is having our fares the lowest that we can and uh, getting people to at least try us out. So I encourage you, if you're interested in driving, you want to make extra money or income, I encourage you to get on our webpage, ridelocalgr.com and go ahead uh, on the tab on the Become a Driver. There's information there for you to look at. There's also other information for our, our Nights Out program because there's other ways to make money besides just miles and minutes. And we can show you how to do that when you become a driverpreneur. So I welcome you to do that. Uh, look into it. If you have any questions, give us a call or go ahead and uh, shout us out. You can find us up. 
Facebook. Actually, you can Google it, Ride Local, and you'll see a where we'll show where our website. So we are transparent. We're out in the market. Uh, we show everything to you, and we're not hiding anything. So if you have any questions or if, uh, any comments, feel free to give us a call. And I probably said that three times, but I can't say it enough that we do encourage comments and questions. All right. Thanks for listening, and we will see you again next week.